Hey, sir. Hey. I heard you had a you had a situation today. Well, you know, I, I had to tell the truth about the domestic spying stuff. Okay, so uh, Dasha Mitchell has made a friend here at uh, Network Station. Uh, I have the microphone. Uh, Thank you. Sir, this, you, your name is Mark Mark Perkel, yes. Mark uh, Perkel, and you're from uh, Church of Reality? Yeah, I'm the founder of the Church of Reality. Uh, is that an actual thing, or is that like uh, just the idea like the Church of Reality? Like, like No, no, I, I've, I've developed uh, 700 web pages of material, you know, based on the idea of believing in everything that's real, you know, something that you would think is fairly obvious, but you know, for some reason it's not. You know. And uh, I, I, I heard that I wasn't there for it. Was there a situation today with uh, with Nancy Pelosi? Yeah, I interrupted Nancy Pelosi in the middle for her defending the NSA spying. I just was sitting there and I just couldn't stand it anymore. You know, I couldn't stand you know the stuff that she was saying, which wasn't true. You know, now I think that she believes that what she was saying was true with, you know, some people, who, you know, who, 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 she was briefed by the NSA, the NSA is lying to her, and she's basically saying that it's a choice between safety and democracy, when actually it's making us less safe because the NSA has created a single point of failure for the internet, and anybody who hacks the NSA can basically bring down most of the computers in the world if they do it right. I, but I do have I have a question for you about that though, sir. Uh, I we, we've talked a lot about people interrupting, uh, uh, like the, the uh, protests uh, interrupting uh, elected officials. Do you feel as if that was the only method that you could have gone about doing that? Because there is a level of like I, I would argue just simple uh, in, in these situations when people come out there, like like an elected official like Nancy Pelosi, who comes to a space like Networks Nation uh, to uh, enter, en engage and try to uh, have those conversations. Is there is there a a level of respect that has to be shown just in order for those conversations to occur? Yeah, generally I agree with you. And I didn't go there with the intent of doing that. I was just sitting there and was just emotionally overwhelmed and just had to just stand up and speak out, you know, because what she was telling, you know, you know, the, the, the audience, which was a very important audience, that this was okay. You know, I called for Bush's impeachment when he did it six years ago. And, you know, and when I heard Obama did it, it was just absolutely stunning because I worked extremely hard to get Obama elected the first time and re-elected the second time, and I turned it over in my mind any way I could to figure out some way that this could make sense to me. And you read the plain text of the Fourth, of the fourth Amendment of the Constitution, and you say, okay, how could that apply to every Verizon customer in the world? And there's just absolutely no way that that could happen. And she's talking about justifying it. We now have these secret, these FISA courts, and, and, and she's talking about secret courts and secret laws. And it just basically undermines the Constitution, and we're no longer a nation, a constitutional nation anymore. Well, I would argue uh, that uh, the idea that there's an issue with uh, the, uh, the NSA and uh, how things are uh, going and that it should be questioned uh, is absolutely true. But at the same time, it's not exactly the same as it was uh, uh, six years ago. It's worse because, than it was six years ago. Uh, actually, I mean, but like a lot of these things actually were, in fact, uh, uh, made, uh, like, actually passed and, and, and legalized. So it's not like before when it wasn't, there wasn't quite an explanation as to uh, what happened and they uh, were pushing things through, then at some point it was done. So as much as I Congress, think so, I'm against what Congress happened. Congress cannot pass a law that overturns the, 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 the Fourth Amendment, and Congress cannot create a secret court that uh, overturns the Fourth Amendment. This is what I, I call a constitutional nullification, because they're basically using the processes to make it illegal to follow the Fourth Amendment and making it legal to, uh, to disobey the Fourth Amendment. When they were going after it, the Electronic Frontier Foundation was going after AT&T when they found their secret spy station on Folsom Street in San Francisco, the only way they could stop the EFF was to grant them immunity, retroactive immunity, and, uh, and, and immunity in the future that if the government tells uh, a citizen to do something illegal and the citizen obeys the government, then they get immunity from prosecution. That's undermining the Constitution. And you know what, I, let, let, let's say I were to uh, uh, say a yes to everything you just said just now, That's this, uh, up, up and down. I still would ask the question about the, the concept of respect. It's a prime example, like, like I, I, the idea that uh, in this environment where there is a there is a uh, a setup of a discussion of how a discussion is happening, there's been uh, literally uh, I know I know the moderator is Alina Maxwell who had been asking for people to ask questions of Nancy Pelosi via Twitter. The hashtag she was actively asking folks to engage and to be able to give these type of uh, questions of, uh, to uh, of the, uh, the the former uh, uh, majority leader and. The, uh, and so there was that route, and it was it was in fact set up uh, by via a discussion to be had, and you then decided that it was that your your dislike of what occur, of what you feel is uh, wrong was more important 
than actually uh, the the basic uh, respect that just goes back and forth. With yeah, I the understand that. If it, you know, in most discussions, I would agree with you. There comes a point where the the importance of the situation rises to a certain level where what must speak out in the moment. You know, this was one of those situations. You know, it's just like Martin Luther King probably favored the Democrats over the Republicans. But uh, you know, he had to you know stand out, and protest, and, I mean, and get Martin people's King, attention. Martin Luther King uh, uh, didn't, wasn't just uh, uh, yelling in the middle of a in the middle of a conversation. Uh, in, uh, that that's Martin Luther King wasn't allowed in the conversation in the first place. Back then. I, I I'm aware of the conversation that Martin Luther King was uh, allowed allowed to be in. So. Uh, but, but he created the conversation, and, oh, and yes, I'm he helping to create the conversation. I, I guess it is. A, go ahead. What are what are the most what is what are what do effective political tactics look like? And while we can we can agree on issues, um, it's, I think the question really comes down to if you have a public forum that's open and available to you, or even there's space provided for you to voice your opinion, is it effective to not use that space and instead you decide and claim your own space? They, they, and they, use yourself to completely subvert. The gravity and importance of the situation required an extraordinary um, in, in, interruption because the NSA is into Apple, uh, Microsoft, and Google, which provides the operating system for most of the computers and most of the cell phones on the planet. They have read-write access into the system, and they have read-write access into the update process for which, you know, updates the operating system are distributed. So, a hacker, a hacker, and this is important, a hacker could hack the NSA, push a virus into the system, and take out the entire internet, which would bring down civilization as we know it. That's the level of importance that we're talking about here. But my question is, is it seems to me like what you're saying is that any time I have a thought, that it rises to a level of importance, and I should share it. So do you ever think that there are appropriate spaces? For example, Zerlina had cards that you could fill out and ask questions. Yeah. Why is it what you have to say at any given moment more important than decorum, more important yeah. than the processes that are set in place for you to air your feelings? The reason it's more important is because they're creating a process for which a hacker anywhere in the world can bring down all the civilization. When are they doing this? They're doing it now. That's what we found out from what Snowden released. It, you know about how they, you know, they got, you know, they're into Apple's backbone. They're into Microsoft. They're into Google. But they're not. Yes, they are. They admitted that they are. You know, Snowden, you know, exposed it, and they admitted. At the moment here, we have there's two different conversations happening here. There's a conversation about whether or not uh, the uh, the gravity of the uh, NSA uh, uh, leaks uh, are in fact uh, as. I guess what they are. Are they what they, what we were uh, brought? They were brought to us, as they said. This is what happened when uh, when Greenwald uh, dropped it, and then, I, I mean, various aspects of it have been then uh, questioned. Some of them walked back. Some have been uh, 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 re re reworded uh, over time. So that's one aspect of it. Uh, that was, by the way, that's Amanda Gandhi from AM Web. That's one aspect of it. But at the same time, the question I'm asking about right now is about the concept of of uh, the, the I guess the the basic idea of how a conversation works and how dialogues in these type of spaces go because we've seen a couple of uh, situations like this recently uh, with uh, uh, someone, uh, the, the woman who uh, sh uh, uh, heckled uh, the uh, the first lady, uh, someone from uh, Code Pink uh, did it to uh, the, yeah, uh, the, the president. I agree with the woman from Code, Code Pink. She should have spoke out. Obama could shut down Guantanamo Bay anytime he wants to and yet he chooses not to. But, but, no, no. But, no, he says he can't. He can. Well, okay. Here's the thing. So I understand that you you feel as if that uh, that he has the, uh, that he has the right to, uh, to do, he can do this. You yes. you have certain specific feelings that you feel like these things are uh, are what should and should not occur, right? I I accept. Well, that. I, I'm, I'm basically saying in my mind it raised it rose to the level of importance that it needed to be shouted out, you know, and that I agree with you that only in the most extreme circumstances should one do that and I'm just saying that in my mind those extreme circumstances were met. 